Hey there guys, you're here with Bo, and thanks for tuning in to another video. Now, as many of you would have known by now, Facebook has just released their very own plans for a cryptocurrency called Libra. Now, literally just 24 hours ago, Facebook officially unveiled Libra. Uh, it unveiled the white paper, some other communications and information about it. But it, is, it has literally been not even one full day, and we've already got some major members of Congress asking Facebook to halt work on this cryptocurrency. This is huge news. So we got this article here from CNBC. Representative Maxine Waters asks Facebook to pause work on cryptocurrency Libra. So this is huge news, and this literally coming within a day of Facebook announcing this project uh, is pretty incredible. So guys, we're going to go into this article in detail. We're going to go into the white paper itself and some other communications from prominent people in the cryptocurrency community that have re reviewed this white paper, and we're going to dig right into this article. So guys, stick around. Thanks for tuning in, and let's get into the video. All right, welcome back, guys. Thank you for tuning in. You are here with Bo Stoner from Cryptocurrency Australia. Now, as we know, Facebook just in the past 24 hours unveiled this project, Libra. Here's an article here from Coindesk. Uh, Facebook unveils Libra cryptocurrency targeting 1.7 billion unbanked. Now, Facebook also revealed their white paper, the Libra white paper, going into the technical details of how they're going to implement this new cryptocurrency within their platform, the technology they're going to be using, who they're targeting, why they're targeting it. And at a very high level, it's a cryptocurrency that's going to be backed by or pegged to one American dollar. So the value is essentially going to be stable. It's going to be a stable coin. Very, very different from Bitcoin and how Bitcoin operates. Uh, but essentially, Facebook, we're going to use their existing user base of over a billion people to target this cryptocurrency. Now, many people in the cryptocurrency community kind of had mixed feelings about this, where they saw it as a huge opportunity to for people to gain exposure to cryptocurrency and thus act as a gateway uh, into Bitcoin. And other people just calling this a sham, a stupid idea, and uh, that it shouldn't be done given how volatile the cryptocurrency project community or the cryptocurrency projects have been in the past because we've had you know, quite a few scams and unfortunately that has tarnished uh, the industry and the good projects. So there's been a lot of mixed sentiment about this project, but we're going to get into this white paper in detail in just a moment. But first of all, I want to look at this breaking news here, right? So just out from CNBC just a few hours ago, Representative Maxine Waters, she's a Democrat, um, asks Facebook to pause work on cryptocurrency Libra. Democrat, Democratic Representative Maxine Waters on Tuesday requested that Facebook pause its development of Libra, a digital currency. Waters' request came hours after Facebook unveiled Libra. Libra will become available to online users in 2020, Facebook said on Tuesday. So reading into this article... Maxine Waters, chair of the House Financial Services Committee on Tuesday, requested that Facebook pause its development of Libra, an upcoming cryptocurrency that the company plans to release in 2020. Given the company's troubled past, I'm requesting that Facebook agree to a moratorium on any movement forward on developing a cryptocurrency until Congress and regulators have the opportunity to examine these issues and take, ac take action. Waters said in a statement on Tuesday. Facebook and a consortium of partners on Tuesday unveiled Libra. It's much-awaited bl uh, blockchain project that the company has been working on over the past year. Libra is an open-source digital currency that people will be able to use to transfer money to peers or merchants over the internet. Facebook was also introducing a digital wallet, Calibra, for users to store and exchange the currency. Representative Patrick McHenry, the ranking Republican on the committee, had requested Waters to call the hearing earlier in the day. While there is great promise for this new technology in fostering financial inclusion and faster payments, particularly in the developing world, we know there are many open questions as to the scope and scale of the project and how it will conform to our global financial regulatory framework, he wrote. We need to go beyond the rumours and speculation and provide a forum to assess this project and its potential unprecedented impact on the financial system. Wow. 
Senator Sherrod Brown, a Democrat, also expressed skepticism, tweeting, We cannot allow Facebook to run a risky new cryptocurrency out of a Swiss bank account without, overs without oversight. And what he's actually referring to is the uh, foundation that uh, Facebook has set up to essentially control the financial aspect of this cryptocurrency. It's what many cryptocurrency projects do. They, they set up an, uh, an independent, uh, usually non-for-profit foundation in Switzerland. So very, very interesting. And reading on, Senator Mark Warner, a Democrat, echoed the sentiment saying Facebook is a company that has lost Americans' trust in its ability to keep their data private. The idea that we're going to turn over our financial data and information to that company, I think they have a big uphill uh, effort to try to convince Americans that they ought to trust in Facebook's proprietary interest in keeping your data secret, Warner said. A Facebook spokesperson told CNBC, we look forward to responding to lawmakers' questions as this process moves forward. And you can read Waters' uh, full statement below. So, I mean, this is pretty big. You've got Democratic and Republican uh, uh, essentially politicians coming out against this project, and they do not seem happy with Facebook launching this. So, I mean, this is a pretty big blow to Facebook. Whether they have to comply with this or not, I, I'm not sure from a legal perspective, uh, but we do know that Mark Zuckerberg was called in front of Congress, I believe either earlier this year or late last year, um, to testify around the security aspects of Facebook. So Facebook is already in hot water, and there are legal... There are legal things brewing in the background for Facebook right now. Um, potential discovery process processes going forward to look into Facebook's privacy uh, processes and what Mark and some of the executive executive team may have known about during the past two years. And just as a side note, doesn't Mark Zuckerberg look like an android? He, he literally looks like a robot. If you were to create uh, a human being in a laboratory... That's exactly what Mark Zuckerberg looks like. I mean, I'm sorry. That's just He just looks like an android. But anyway, moving on, guys. Getting into a bit more about the white paper and some of the details around this. And, and what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to reference uh, Safety Anne Amus's uh, review of the white paper because Safety Anne is prominent in the Bitcoin community, um, highly respected certainly by me in regards to his knowledge on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and he's just given a good summary of uh, the Libra white paper so I thought this would be good to go through. Now he starts here by saying Libra white paper initial analysis the only digital currency other than Bitcoin that matters and it could succeed massively but it does not compete with Bitcoin it reinforces Bitcoin's value proposition and will likely need to rely on Bitcoin if it succeeds. Facebook has some 2 billion accounts and extremely detailed data on them. Its extensive data mining and identity verification capabilities mean it has the potential to build by far the largest platform by user number of any financial institution. To onboard billions, Visa or PayPal need to go through people's banks, banks to verify their identity, which is highly expensive, manual and unscalable. Facebook tracks your every move and knows you better than you or your mum do. They don't need a bank and can scale much faster. An international transaction on the Visa network has to go through clearance and settlement through many financial institutions and central banks, entailing costs and risks. On Libra, users can transact peer-to-peer -peer through only one institution, the perks of 2 billion plus users. Libra being backed by national currencies means it is backed by the USD. Since all other national currencies at this point are backed by USD and managed by central banks to try and stay stable against the dollar. Other government coins are just dollars plus issuer risk. For billions of people, a dollar backed Libra on your phone globally is infinitely superior to national currency in market depth and maintaining value. If it succeeds, Libra will most likely destroy third world currencies or force them to be fully pegged to and backed by the US dollar. For billions of people, a Facebook payment network will offer more and cheaper transactions than any other KYC AML platforms. If it succeeds, Libra will likely eat most fiat payment processes like Visa, PayPal, and Western Union, particularly those functioning in the third world. Do not underestimate how powerful and beneficial such a network could be. If access to global finance and the USD were as easy as access to a Facebook account, billions of people's lives would be improved drastically. 
Having said that, it's important to remember all of this is far easier said than done. Regulatory approval and internationally is the main hurdle to overcome. But given the money, power and influence Facebook has, they might pull this off. But to be clear, Facebook is building a centralized payment processor on the US dollar and calling it a blockchain. Like all centralized S coins, they've set up a foundation to pretend the thing is independent. They're even pretending its development will be open source. As S coins amply demonstrate, these pretenses are far easier to maintain in the white paper stage. Good luck to, to the Libra team keeping your development and blockchain open when people try to use them to send money to Iran. And what he's referencing there is the sanctions currently imposed on Iran by the US government. The foundation will remain independent until it tries to do something against Facebook's wishes. Will Facebook just allow its billions of users to seamlessly shift to a Libra they don't like? Facebook users' access to Libra can be turned off by Facebook, utterly subjugating the foundation to Facebook's will. The only functional advantage of calling this centralized system a blockchain is arguably in regulation. Easier to get things by regulators by using crypto buzzwords than admitting to just running a bank. Otherwise, everything would be more efficient if centralized. Facebook's comparative advantage is in processing peer-to-peer -peer payments between its members, not in building the monetary system on which these payments are based. As long as government currencies rule, Facebook are beholden by their regulators. In search of bribes, political favours and attention whoring, every politician worldwide will want to put barriers in the face of Libra. The French are already leading the way. And interesting, he said that 16 hours ago, and here we are 10 hours later with uh, Maxime Waters and uh, the Republicans coming out against it. Reading on. A global payment network governed by dozens of governments is unworkable in the long run. The monetary nationalism problem Hayek identified in the 1930s can't be solved with payment processes. It needs a global free market money, free from government control. No amount of cryptography, blockchains, or independent foundations will stop you from being politically controlled, unless you are Bitcoin, for reasons explained in detail in my book's last chapter. And guys, as a side note, this book out of the several I have read on cryptocurrencies in my couple of year journey in this is the best book I have ever read and I cannot recommend it enough. The Bitcoin standard is unbelievable and I highly, highly, highly recommend you read it. Reading on. Further, no amount of appeals to decentralization or blockchain buzzwords will mask the fact that the system will be completely authoritarian with Facebook maintaining full surveillance and censorship capabilities. So, if it is to succeed, Facebook has to become the executive arm of the US government's financial, intelligence, and foreign policies. And its decentralized foundation will have to do uh, the United States government's bidding on everything from monetary policy to banking regulations and sanctions. But by increasing people's financial freedom while remaining politically controlled, Libra could, would be digging its own grave. All the problems of political money in the 20th century would remain, but people would find it much easier to opt out from than regular government monies. There are no armies forcing you to accept Libra, but in a world in which everyone has their money on an app is a world in which everyone is a click away from Bitcoin. History shows us hard monies tend to kill easy monies when the two are exchangeable. Bitcoin is hard money. It is apolitical, neutral, censorship free, and it can't even spy on you if it wanted to. All of these, all of these are things Facebook can never install on Libra. Facebook shouldn't think of itself as competing with Bitcoin, as that's how they'll become an irrelevant, stupid S-coin like the thousands we have. In the long run, Bitcoin represents the only chance for Facebook to build Libra on a global, neutral protocol and not on a political currency. So, if governments let it, Libra will likely kill most KYC AML fiat processes and currencies, producing a global digital payment system based on USD. The problems it'll face then are the same problems based by any political monetary system, to which Bitcoin is the only working solution. In the short run, Libra will only survive by being subservient to the USD and pegged to it. In the long run, it will only survive by being subservient to Bitcoin and pegged to it. The only other fate possible is the life and inevitable death of yet another irrelevant, stupid <laughs> S-coin. So there you have it, there, guys. That's from Safety and Amos. Highly recommend you go and follow him at Safety and There will be a link to his Twitter uh, down in the description below. Very interesting developments on um, on the US government coming out so quickly against Facebook. 
despite Facebook's, um, despite uh, you know, kind of the unknown legal waters that Facebook might be in, this is a huge deal. This is not what Facebook wants. This is bad for the brand. This is bad for the project. This is bad for it overall. So guys, I'll be staying tuned into this and I'll be covering the updates to this as it goes on because it does have such a big flow and effect uh, for Facebook and the entire cryptocurrency industry, just given how big the reach Facebook has to its users. Guys, that's it from me. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little notification button as well to come on board and be notified of future content here on this channel. If you liked the video, likes are always really appreciated. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought uh, of the content. Tell me what you think of the United States government coming out against this. Are you for that? Are you against it? What did you think of Libra if you knew about it already? My name's Bo. Just want to say thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.